Good morning, guys. I am the author of Upcycle with Decoupage. My name is Patty Elhoff, and I wanted to do a project today that will not involve decoupage, but it was inspired by a blog called Salvage Sister and Mister, and I love the idea of the word salvage, salvation, to take anything and just make it so much nicer or better than it is to save it, actually. This was something that a friend gave me, and he said, I know it's pretty beat up, but I was thinking you might be able to do something with it, because he knows how I am. And I just wanted to show you a close-up on some of the details in this. I don't know if this was a frame or a frame, for, it was a frame, obviously. I don't know if it was a frame for a picture or for a mirror. I am going to show you what I'm going to do. The first thing I did was I took some polymer clay. This is such a hideous color and I burnt it, but it didn't matter for this project. I was using this as a mold. So what I did was for areas like right here, where obviously all of this beautiful detail work had chipped off, I simply took some polymer clay and I went into the areas where it already exists and it is not chipped. Let me show you that. I pressed it and the polymer clay didn't stick. I pulled it away and then you can see that I have a mold here of the exact, this looks better because it's not burnt. <laughs> I don't work with polymer clay too often, I'm sorry that this looks like this, but it worked just as well. I then put this in the oven, and if you know how to make molds, you're far better off than I am. I don't know how to do that, and I really wanted to get started on this. So I took the polymer clay, pressed it in, I baked it a little too much, but it did dry to just where I needed it. I then took paper clay and I added the paper clay over top because if I were to just add the polymer clay as the part, these pieces all stand out and this piece would have been reversed. I took the paper clay and I pressed it into the mold. I now have the exact print on the paper clay which I let air dry. I'm going to use E6000 glue because nothing holds like that and it holds forever. And I'm going to, first I'm going to file down some of these edges, but all of these areas that you see where that molding and the siding chipped away, I'm going to add the paper clay. And I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to glue everything down and then I'll come right back. While my frame is drying, the glue is drying to keep all of these pieces on here, I made a batch of homemade chalk paint. And chalk paint, especially for this project, is going to do a couple of things. With chalk paint, you don't need to prime anything. You can just start to paint right over it. And it normally only requires one coat. I'll put a link to the video I saw where they tell you how to make the chalk paint. But I can also tell you that you are just supposed to, this is what I did according to the video, take two and a half tablespoons of the plaster of Paris that you can buy in any Home Depot, I think Walmart, any hardware store, Lowe's sells it, and it's pretty cheap. You just take two and a half tablespoons of that and in a separate container, whoops, you put the two and a half tablespoons plaster of Paris and then one tablespoon of water and you just keep mixing it up until it has a pancake pancake type consistency then uh, you once it's mixed up and there's no lumps and it doesn't take that long you then take eight ounces of latex paint 
You know, when you go to the uh, big box stores in the paint sections, they have those little, pretty, very pretty colors of paint all over the place. You can select any color you want, just as long as it's eight ounces, and mix it with this two and a half tablespoons of the plaster of Paris with water, that pancake looking batter. So you mix it all together. I'm using white, and it gives you a nice, thick paint. It shouldn't be lumpy, just thick. And I'm going to start to paint all of this now because I think the glue is dry while I was making my chalk paint. And if you'd like to buy real chalk paint, they've just got the most beautiful colors, but they're really expensive. They're not that easy to find right now. You either have to get them online, or if you're lucky enough to have a boutique near you, boutique that sells it, you can go there. But I'm going to apply my own chalk paint, my homemade chalk paint, to the whole piece right now, and then I'll come back when that's dry. Chalk paint is dry. Everything's dry. I put all of the pieces on and went around the whole frame, and I glued the pieces on. Oops, focus. I glued these pieces on that were missing, went all around the frame, used the chalk paint. You could see that nice thick coat. I'll move on to the next step and I'll show you what I'm doing with this, which I'm really excited about. And now I'm using tacks in the back on the bottom to secure the piece of fabric with the script on it tightly. I'm going to keep the tool gathered, the back piece of fabric tight, and I'm using tacks on the bottom. The whole idea is I want to be able to take this off and wash it if I someday need to, so uh, let me get finished doing that and then I'll show you how it looks when it's all lit up and in the meantime let me say thank you so much for subscribing guys my book is called Upcycle with Decoupage available on Amazon Barnes and Noble and Scoby books and another I just want to mention again the site called Salvage Sister and Mister thank you so much for uh, mentioning me on your blog and you really inspired this project because this is truly something that was salvaged. It came out of the trash and here it is now. I'm going to be hanging it up on my wall and I'm very, very happy with the way it turned out. I'm not even done yet. So let me finish it. I will say thank you and just stay tuned so that you can see the end result. We're in New Jersey. We had a massive snowstorm, then an ice storm this week. So we lost power for a day and a half cable, telephone, and the computer, the internet, we lost that for two days. And I've everything's been pushed back, so the cable guy's coming in and out, which is why I am making some parts of the video silent. While he was here and the dogs were barking, I kept filming. But I will be adding subtitles. So thanks again, guys. I'll see you next week. But stay tuned so that you can see the finished product.